the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and all those other wonderful Kraft quality foods. When you buy margarine, here's something to remember. The margarine that millions prefer because it tastes so good is parquet margarine made by Kraft. And the reason parquet always tastes so good is because it's always fresh. In states where colored margarine is sold, get yellow parquet margarine already colored and ready to serve in the new Flavor Saver package. Each golden quarter pound is individually wrapped in parchment-lined aluminum foil. It seals in all that wonderful parquet goodness and flavor, keeps staleness and odors out. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy Color Quick bag or regular package. In any state, in any package, parquet is the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Pick up a pound tomorrow. There's a lot of interest in the newspaper at the great Gildersleeve's house this morning. The front page is pretty well taken up with the coming elections, but that isn't what interests our water commissioner. Hey, Marjorie, may I see the society page? The society page, Junkie? Yes, my dear. Get him the society page. Mr. Gildersleeve, wouldn't you rather have this page? There's an editorial about Mr. Bullard for mayor. No, thanks, Bronco. Just the society page. What's he want with a society page? Here you are, Anki. Thank you, my dear. What does a grown man want with a society page? <laughs> All right, Leroy. Hey, Bertie, any more pancakes? <laughs> Leroy, you already had two big stacks. There ain't no more. Now, Leroy, breakfast is over. Oh, gosh, I'm still hungry. Oh, can I have a society page when you're through with it? Leroy, what do you want with a society page? There's syrup on it. I'll eat it. You. <laughs> that boy, he'd do it, too. <laughs> well, here's what I'm looking for. There's a picture of Judge Hooker. Say, there is some syrup here, right on his goatee. The old goat should wear a bib. <laughs> uh, let me see the judge's picture, Unky. I want to see that, too. What's the judge doing on the society page, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, the sons of Summerfield had their annual membership meeting last night. The judge is one of the founding fathers. You mean the judge is a pilgrim? I know he's pretty old, but... No, zero. <laughs> judge Hooker is one of the club's founders. <laughs> Where'd he find that cap? There's nothing funny about that, Leroy. All the sons of Summerfield wear coonskin caps. What's that hanging down over his ear, Mr. Gildersleeve? That's a raccoon's tail. Doesn't he look wonderful? Just like Daniel Boone. Well, that tail flying, he looks more like a hot rod. <laughs> oh, now I know why you wanted the society pay, Junkie. Are the sons of Summerfield taking you in this year? Well, I haven't read the article yet. But I'm positive they'll ask me in this year. They only take in the most important men in town, Bronco. Well, that certainly should include Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah? Why are you more important this year than you were last year, Unc? Uh, you well. Yeah. I thought Mr. Bullard always blackballed you. No, well, he doesn't dare this year. Bullard's running for mayor, and he's after votes. Yeah, let's see. Say, my name isn't here. Maybe you don't need votes that bad. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, there aren't any names. It says, the chosen few will be notified. When, Unky? Well, it says, last night. Poor Unky. He always wanted to be a son of Summerfield. Too bad, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. If you had one of those coonskin caps, I could use it to cover my pet turtle at night. <laughs> Leroy, I don't think you should kid Mr. Gildersleeve about those caps. Who's kidding? Leroy, it just happens to be the greatest honor a man can have in Summerfield to be asked to wear one of those raccoon caps. Oh, I don't know it's such an honor. All the important men in town aren't members. Of course, they're my best friends belong. Peavy, Judge Hooker, and darned old goat. Uncle Mort, you shouldn't say that about the judge. Well, and take Rumson Bullet. 
What's he but a stuffed shirt? If they don't want me in it, I don't care. I wouldn't join those mossbacks if they asked me on bended knees. Oh, boy, Uncle. I can be hard to get, too. I'll get it, Bertie. I'm on my way to school. Yeah, I'll get it, Leroy. Uh, we'll both get it. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, good morning, Gilday. Leroy. Oh, hello, Judge. Hi, Judge. Where's your cap? Oh, did you see the morning paper? Yes, we saw it, Judge. Since my picture appeared, there's been a phenomenal rise in circulation. Whose circulation, Judge? The papers or yours? The papers, Gilda. They're printing extra copies. Eofer, who wants them? I do. I ordered three dozen extra copies myself. <laughs> well, you can have my paper, too. I don't want it. You should keep it as a memento, Gilda. Now that you're going to be a son of Summerfield... I am? Last night, Rumson Bullard and I pushed your name through. You did, Horace? What a fine bunch of fellows. Oh, brother. It was too late to notify you last night. But now, by virtue of the authority vested in me, I command you, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, to appear at our meeting for new members tonight. Do you accept? Do I? Unc. What is it, Leroy? Make him get down on his knees. <laughs> what? You said you wouldn't join those old moss back Leroy, it's time for school. Well, Gildersleeve, you made it. Tonight you'll be a son of Summerfield. Very exclusive organization. Invite George is getting more exclusive all the time. I think I'll drop in the drugstore and let Peavy congratulate me. Hello, Peavy. Mm, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Well, you can congratulate me, Peavy. At long last, I'm joining the Sons of Summerfield. You're not seeing the judge, have you? Well, he came to see me. And, Peavy, I can't wait for that meeting tonight. Well, I can't wait either. I always enjoy the horseplay before those initiations. Yes, I imagine you... Horseplay? <laughs> <laughs> is the horseplay fun, Phoebe? Well, it is for the members. Phoebe, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the judge didn't say anything about horseplay. Well, he wouldn't. But you're a pretty husky fellow, well padded, sound of wind and limb. Yes, but Phoebe, what do they do? Not that I'm concerned about it. Well, that's all secret shenanigans. I don't know what Mr. Bullard has planned. Bullard? What's he got to do with it? He doesn't like me. No, I don't know. He seemed very anxious to have you join. He did? Then he asked to be put in charge of initiation. Who? Oh. <laughs> Excuse me just a minute, Mr. Gilbert, please. Let's see. Liniment, bandages, iodine... Sterile gauze, assorted splints. Peavy, what are you doing? Just getting an emergency kit ready for the meeting tonight. <laughs> Bandages? I You use those things in the initiations? No, we use them after the initiation. <laughs> <laughs> but Peavy, when you join the Sons of Summerfield, you don't need first aid. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, if, if it's that bad, why did you join? Well, they just came and got me. They wanted a pharmacist on the scene. Oh? And after the initiation, I wanted one, too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Peavy, I don't believe you. Well, neither did Mrs. Peavy. I didn't get home for two days. <laughs> Peavy? You mean the initiation lasted two days? Well, counting Mrs. Peavy, mine lasted a week. <laughs> uh, that's very funny. <laughs> What am I laughing at? I don't know why. I've been able to get that initiation off my mind all day. It'll be over in an hour or two. Or a day or two. No. Peavy was just trying to get me worked up. Nothing to an initiation. Hello, Skillersleeve. Oh, hello, Bronco. Bronco, you're home early. Well, Marjorie, there wasn't much to do with the water department. Mr. Gillersleeve's too excited about joining the Sons of Summerfield tonight. <laughs> 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 Bronco, 
When you were in college, you joined a lot of secret organizations. I guess you had a lot of fun when you were initiated. The horseplay and all. Gee, do you have to go through that stuff before you get in? Well, they seem to have something planned. Childish pranks. They'll probably blindfold me and have me eat cold spaghetti. I don't mind if they put some cheese in it. <laughs> no, I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve. I have an idea they'll put you through the paces. You think so? Oh, they won't do anything to you, Anki, with Judge Hooker there. Well, the judge isn't in charge of initiation. Who is, Mr. Gildersleeve? Rumson Bullard. Mr. Bullard? Oh! <laughs> Mr. Bullard. What are you laughing at? Boy, do I feel sorry for you. <laughs> well, if you feel sorry, stop laughing. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Bullard might do something to Anki. I wouldn't put it past him. No, Marjorie, there's nothing to be concerned about. There are laws to protect citizens. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, those fellows can go pretty far. A senior in college had it in for me, and when he caught me at the initiation, do you know what he did to me? Uh, no. That big ape waited until he got his chance, and then he... Bronco, don't tell Uncle Mort about that. Why not? You don't want to frighten him. Oh, you don't have to worry about frightening me. Go ahead, Bronco. What did the big ape do? No, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, I think Marge is right. I don't want to frighten you. Go for it. Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Bertie? I got your new suit ready for the initiation tonight. My new suit? Yes, and a fancy white shirt. If you're going to be a son of Summerfield, you got to shine. <laughs> Anki, uh, don't you think you should wear something, well, something older? Well... Something old? Mr. Gillsleeve, it ain't gonna be that kind of initiation, is it? Well, I don't know, Bertie. Everybody around here is trying to scare me. Oh, if they've taken you into that nice club, they ain't gonna sport around with you, Mr. Gillsleeve. Oh, of course not. That Sons of Summerfield is a gentleman's club. When they take in a new member, they ain't gonna sport around. No. Those men are all your friends, Mr. Gillsleeve. Certainly. Judge Hooker, would he get you in there and then play tricks on you? The judge? Would he? No, no. And there's Mr. Peavy. He wouldn't. Would he? Bertie, they're my friends. And Miss Bullock? Well. Miss Gillsleeve? Yes, Bertie? On second thought, you better wear your old suit. Oh. Oh, my goodness. getting dark. I've got to face that initiation in a couple of hours. Uh, there's nothing to be concerned about. Bullard doesn't dare lay a hand on me. He needs my vote. Still, they blindfold you at these secret initiations. You can't tell who's giving it to you. you know, I saw Bullard put some stuff in his car. It looked like rope and chains. Say, I think I'll go take a peek in his Cadillac. Gildersleeve. Oh, Mr. Bullard, I didn't see you on my porch. I was about to ring your bell. I just wanted to be sure we'll see you this evening. Oh, yes. Good. <laughs> nice of you to take such an interest in getting me in the club, Mr. Bullard. I've been looking forward to this for five years. Gildersleeve, I've been looking forward to this, too. You have? See you tonight, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Ooh, what a dirty laugh. Well, that settles it. He's laying for me. But I'll fool him. I'll fool him. I'm not going to be an old son of Summerfield. I'll fool him. Judge Hooker speaking. Judge, about tonight. Yes, Gildersleeve. I'm not being initiated. Explain to the sons of Summerfield that I can't make it. Why not? Well, I have a previous engagement. Very important. Well, it must be very important. We were all ready for you. Yeah, that's what I just found out. I mean, I'm sorry, Judge. Gildy, are you sure this initiation doesn't have you a little frightened? Judge, how can you say such a thing? Well, I'll admit some of our initiated get cold feet, but we've never let a man get away. Uh-oh. Goodbye, Judge. 
They'll never get me. Not that I'm afraid of anything. Hi, Al. Go up, Leroy. Don't frighten me like that. What a character. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. Fresh is a word of many meanings. In a schoolboy, it's high spirits. In a schoolgirl's complexion, it's beauty. In a margarine, it's taste. And that's why so many women insist on parquet margarine as the margarine they serve on their tables and use in their cooking. For parquet is the margarine that always tastes so good because it's always fresh. Yes, fresh, really fresh, always fresh. Parquet is made fresh from selected products of American farms. It's rushed fresh in refrigerated trucks to your store. It's sold fresh by your grocer. Each pound of parquet is flavor dated, and stocks are regularly inspected by Kraft men. That's why Kraft can positively guarantee to you that no matter where or when you buy parquet margarine, it will be fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. For freshness, for flavor, get P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft at your grocer's. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve was looking forward to joining the sons of Summerfield until he learned that his longtime enemy, Rumson Bullard, was in charge of the initiation. Those sons of Summerfield won't get their hands on me. I told them I had a previous engagement, and by George, I'll get one. Yeah, I hope she's home. Why, Throckmorton. Hello, Catherine. What a surprise to see you. To see me? Well, Catherine, we have a date tonight. We do? To go dancing. Throckmorton, you didn't ask me to go dancing tonight. Yeah, well, I meant to. Yeah, I mean, are you sure we don't have a date? Of course I'm sure, silly. Besides, this is the evening you're supposed to be initiated into the Sons of Summerfield. Yeah, I'd pass that up rather than break a date with a girl like you. Gorgeous. <laughs> we still don't have a date. Eh. I have to work the hospital this evening. I'm due there now. You Well, why don't I go down there with you? Oh, Throckmorton, you're so impetuous. You bet. That's probably the hospital calling. I'll have to run. You, but, Catherine... I'm sorry, Throckmorton. I have my patients to think of. She doesn't know how close I am to being a patient. <laughs> the evening you and I were going to lay the tracks for your model railroad? Heck no. Piggy and me are going to see Hopper on Cassidy. Oh. I thought we may have had a previous engagement. <laughs> Uncle Mort, I thought you had that previous engagement with your little nurse. Well... Oh, I don't blame you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm sure you'd rather have a date with her than take Mr. Bullard's initiation. Yeah, I'll say. Dating Miss Milford's a lot less painful, huh, Unc? <laughs> no, watch it, young man. Leroy, stop teasing Uncle Mort about the initiation. He's frightened enough as it is. No, wait a minute. Children, I want to make something clear to you. Marjorie, Bronco, Leroy, all of you. I'm not afraid of this initiation. I'd be down there right now if I hadn't thought I had a previous engagement. And I thought I had one. Ah! <laughs> oh, all right. I'll show all of you this silly initiation means nothing to me. Where's my old suit? I'm going. Good for you, Uncle. That's the old fight, Mr. Gildersleeve. Atta boy, Uncle. Here, take my geography book. What's that for? You can stick it in the seat of your pants. <laughs> well? I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. I've got it. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve's resident. If it's the Judge Hooker, tell the old goat I'm on my way. This ain't no old goat. This is your little bow piece. <laughs> Oh, Pete? Hello? Throckmorton, I'm calling from the hospital. Well, Catherine. You were so sweet this evening, and I may have forgotten we had a date. Yeah, well, it isn't important now. But it is. We're not busy at 
the hospital. Would you care to spend the evening with me here? Would I? See you soon, then. Sooner than you think. Bye. <laughs> Holy cow, what's going on now? You see, children, I did have a previous engagement. With Miss Milford, Uncle? You bet. Leroy, here's your geography book. I'm studying medicine tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sons of Summerfield. Oh, there you are, Throckmorton. Hello, Catherine. You did rush over. Yep, hit every green light. By the way, Catherine, you're standing under one. What? The green light over the door. That means go ahead. Throckmorton, we're in the hospital. Oh? Care to step out under a traffic light? <laughs> I'll be off in an hour. Great. What'll I do in the meantime? Well, how'd you like to look around? See what goes on behind the scenes. Fine. If you think nobody would object. Oh, no, no, no. It'll be all right. There are just a few nurses around. Why don't you just slip into this white jacket? Me? Of course, sure. If anybody questions you, just say you're a doctor. Dr. Gildersleeve? Well, say you're, you're Dr. Hubble from out of town. Here. Here, let me button the jacket for you. Yeah. You watch it, Catherine. You're tickling. Oh, Billy. <laughs> Now, you put on this white cap, it'll make you look professional. <laughs> That's for me. I'll see you later. Even Catherine? Yeah. Oh, well. Dr. Hubble, huh? Yeah, let's see how I look in this outfit. Here's a mirror in this linen closet. Say, I look pretty good. I should have been a doctor instead of a water commissioner. <laughs> Dr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Jack is a little tight. Look at those brawny arms hanging down there. They look very capable. Well, they should. They've turned off a lot of water in their day. <laughs> oh, uh, pardon me. You oh, certainly. Excuse me. Are you a doctor? Me? Yes. I'm Throckmorton P. Hubblesley. I mean, <laughs> Hubble. <laughs> oh, well, I'm an intern. I hadn't seen you around. Well, I'm not around very often. You know, Doctor, for a moment, I thought you might be impersonating a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Me? How could you think a thing like that? Well, I was reading where some imposter got caught doing it last week. Yeah? What happened? Well, I think he got off too easy. $5,000 fine in 10 years. $5,000 fine in 10 years. <laughs> well, see you around, Doctor. I have to go take some blood counts. <laughs> what a job. Counting blood. Well, Gildersleeve, you must look like a doctor. You fooled that intern. I think I'll stroll down the hall. Yeah, there's a patient with the door open. He can't be very sick. Hello there. How's the bandaged foot? Oh, it's a head. <laughs> there's a bed turned around. Well, he smiled at me. I guess I have a good bedside manner. Well, right, George, I should have been a doctor. Yes, sir, I'm enjoying this. Oh, doctor, Dr. Hubble. Is somebody calling Dr. Hubble? Well, that's me. I better get this cap and jacket off. Doctor, don't take off your jacket. We need you in surgery. Surgery? You don't need me. Oh, yes, we do. It's an emergency appendectomy. Appendectomy? You put it in there. Young man. Oh, I can't do it. I don't have my license yet. They put me under the prison. Oh, my goodness. Uh, right in here. The patient's under anesthetic. The nurses and other interns are ready. Yeah, but... But, ooh, look at all the people with masks on. Uh, there's the patient under the sheet. Ooh, big fellow. Have you scrubbed up, doctor? Yeah, well, I took a bath before I left home. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> Hurry, doctor. Scalpel. Scalpel? Well, now, wait a minute. I have a confession to make. I'm not a doctor. You're not a doctor? What? Not a doctor? Oh, you imposter. Yeah, that's right. I'm an imposter. I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. I only did it while waiting for a nurse. Mr. Gildersleeve, this is a very serious offense. Yeah, I know. $5,000 in 10 years. At least that. We'll let the patient decide. The patient? Nurse, pull back the sheet. Yes, doctor. Yeah, I don't want to see him. Why not, Gildy? Oh! <laughs> Judge Hooker, 
Impersonating a doctor, were you, Gildersleeve? Bullet. Is that you behind that mask? Oh, and Catherine. Are you in on this, too? When Judge Hooker asked me, I couldn't resist helping them. Gildersleeve, you can't escape the sons of Summerfield. Well, you've got it. I guess you want to take me to the initiation. This is it, Gildy. It's over. Is this all? Welcome to the Sons of Summerfield, Gildersleeve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you fellas certainly fooled me. <laughs> say, who's in this white gown? Another nurse? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> really? <laughs> What a fine bunch of fellows. All together now for Gildy. For he's, he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Remember, the margarine that tastes so good because it's fresh, really fresh, always fresh, is parquet margarine made by Kraft. In states where the law permits the sale of colored margarine, you can now buy yellow parquet already colored and ready to serve in its new aluminum foil flavor saver wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. In any state, in any package, it tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. Why, George, fellas, this operating room idea was really clever. Great initiation. Thank you, Gelda. It was my idea. <laughs> of course, I guess what you were going to do. I was way ahead of you. Gildersleeve, didn't you think we were going to paddle you a little? Paddle me? No. I knew you fellas wouldn't do that. Old friends of mine. All right, Gildy. You are now a son of Summerfield. And here is your coonskin cap. Well, just like a crown. Yeah, I'll put it on for you. You? It's too big. Judge, you're pulling it down over my eyes. I can't see. Are you sure you can't see, Gildersleeve? Not a thing. Good. Oh! Ah! What a sneaky thing to do. The Great Gilda's Lead is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Dick Crenna, Gail Gordon, Gil Stratton, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. There's magic in mustard. Yes, when you want to put new taste excitement in almost anything, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors pop right out. Every bite tastes better, particularly if the mustard you use is Kraft prepared mustard. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer mustard mild, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Get both kinds, for when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, listen next Sunday afternoon to The Falcon over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and hear The Falcon solve the case of the double exposure. <laughs> This is the Great Gildersleeve. On your marks for...